Throughout the 13 years Minecraft has been around, there have been a variety of mysteries, myths and straight up legends. Paranormal beings of which millions around the world swear by seeing, with certain extraordinary videos racking up tens of millions of views. It's no surprise that Minecraft has a long history of mysteries, yet most of the world only knows of one, Herobrine. But even before Herobrine came to be, in the game's earliest days, there were a variety of equally as known mysteries and myths that scared and captivated the game's early community, of which have all been forgotten, lost to time. Today, we uncover Minecraft's oldest mysteries, the forgotten stories and myths, in this Halloween special video. So, let's begin. In the early days of Minecraft, when the grass was a bright neon green and the game's eerie lack of smooth lighting made the beautiful alpha landscape look straight out of a horror game at night, a player by the name of SS Lithuania would upload a video. The video, now with over 750,000 views simply titled Minecraft Spotted UFO, showcased SS Lithuania casually breaking some dirt blocks on a small cliff at night when suddenly out of nowhere, just within his field of view, what looked like an unidentified flying object quickly passes by. SS Lithuania replays the video, helping us see the abnormality, even zooming in on the rather convincing flying object. Now going through the comments, you can see that there are many players from 10 plus years ago who were actually discussing the occurrence as if it had the potential to be true. Even those who had come back on nostalgia trips to view the video once more mentioned believing that a UFO was actually present all those years ago. I'm going to show you another two instances of UFO sightings. This one is from early 2013 with only 14,000 views. The uploader claimed to have found this video in their old video files and was unable to follow the UFO as it supposedly sped away. Here's another from early 2015 with 36,000 views. The uploader even goes as far as to show their mods, proving the sighting's legitimacy, although this one is clearly just an end crystal. Now, sorry to break the illusion here if any of you seriously believed any of these sightings were real, but they can all be easily explained. The first sighting by SS Lithuania, also the most convincing, is quickly dispelled by the fact that he is an animator or has experience animating, as we can see from his channel. The second sighting utilized a mod known as Black Magic Zeppelin mod, which he unfortunately gives away right here at the beginning of the video. And the third sighting is just some crystal texture above a bat. But here's what's interesting. As the game gets more and more modern, the sightings get less and less realistic. And that's the thing. Back in Minecraft Alpha especially, the game was unknown. It wasn't as popular, players weren't as experienced, and it felt really vast and mysterious. Coupled with the fact that around the time of the first sighting, Notch had regularly done a series of secret Friday updates whereby he would add new features to the game without telling players exactly what was added, these UFO sightings were all the more believable. Minecraft Alpha is renowned for its lack of smooth lighting and brightness slider, making it perfect for dark, low-quality UFO sightings at night. Players genuinely couldn't tell if this sighting was faked, and as such, UFO sightings and rumors were common around the time. Once the game gained more popularity and the secret updates ended, the mystique of such UFO sightings was all but lost. Just like in the real world today, where UFO sightings and culture are not nearly as popular as they once were, the mystery of UFO sightings are ultimately gone from Minecraft today. SS Lithuania's UFO sighting wasn't the only video he would contribute to Minecraft's historical mythology. On September the 24th, 2010, he would upload a video called Minecraft New Monster. The video currently with almost 5 million views would become famous to players at the time. As stated in the video's description, Yesterday I was playing the new Minecraft version and suddenly I came across a strange robot type creature. We call it Minebot. Scroll down far enough in the comments and you can see that some people weren't sure as to whether this was some unique mod or actually in the game. As mentioned prior, SS Lithuania was a skilled animator and taking advantage of the mystique surrounding the game at the time was able to fool a lot of earlier players into believing this monster was real. And to be fair, considering that some early 2009 Minecraft versions had mobs and textures in the game which also looked just as out of place as Minebot, it didn't seem too far from believable. These days, Minebot and many of SS Lithuania's other high quality animations are simply relics of the past. Never again will such animations and features be believable. On October the 31st, 2010, a user by the name of Dead Skin Mask would upload their paranormal Minecraft experience. Very strange house in Minecraft that I did not build was the video's title, now sitting at 6.7 million views. Uh, I have a little bit of a weird video here right now. Uh, quick story while the sun's coming up. Um, I made a portal into hell. Um, I don't know where I am, but the first thing I noticed whenever I popped out was this cliff over here in between the trees. 
The video begins with Deadskin Mask exiting another portal, mentioning how they came out at an unknown location. He walks around finding a subscribe button, saying you should subscribe to the Mr. Epic. He's almost at 450k subs and wants to hit 500k by the end of the year. No pressure. Anyways, as he was exploring the odd terrain, he noticed something unusual in the distance. Once I got over here, I saw in the distance right where my cursor is, like a little uh, walkway made out of um, dirt. A little walkway as he described it made of dirt with torches on it. This is strange because he had never been to this part of the world before. He explores closer, finding a cave partially lit by torches which he did not place, noticing the unusual water as well. As he continued to scale the mountain, getting closer to the anomaly, he finds a set of stairs leading to a small base, mentioning how far it is from a spawn point. Inside the base are a bunch of items and a very deep mine. Further in the base is a fenced off mountainside and an old cobblestone structure. Deadskin Mask continues to navigate the strange house, trying to discover what's happened, asking his audience if he should take over it as his own, loot the chest and run, or if they had experienced this unique phenomena themselves before concluding the video. I guess I'm just gonna leave it at that. Frankly, I, I don't really have anything else to say about this, so. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day. So, what exactly is going on here? Well, Deadskin Mask would post to the Minecraft forums seeking the answer to that very question, to which he was met with, well, mostly laughter. But amongst all the skeptics, there were a handful of users who were talking about chunk errors or bugs. You see, this video was uploaded on the 31st of October 2010, Halloween to be precise, and the exact same day that Minecraft Alpha 1.2.0 released, the Halloween update adding the nether to the game for the very first time. Now let me show you something interesting. If I create a new Minecraft world in Alpha 1.1.2, the version before Alpha 1.2.0, then switch to Alpha 1.2.0 version 2, the very same version used in this video, well hey, what do you know? There are a bunch of chunk borders and errors present exactly like the ones in the video. When Minecraft updated to Alpha 1.2.0, something to do with terrain generation must have changed, leading to chunk borders where new chunks met older chunks. There even seems to be instances of naturally generated dirt bridges that almost look identical to the one in the video. So was the video faked or was it some obscure bug? While smaller YouTuber Enderboss25 got in contact with Deadskin Mask two years ago now, managing to get the original world save as well as asking him some questions on Discord. Deadskin Mask did not say it was faked, rather mentioning that he thought it may be some weird bug where chunks from a multiplayer server overwrote his single player world. Many comments on the original video also allude to this, with many players stating they experienced the exact same thing in their worlds themselves. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that's simply not possible, it's just not how Minecraft works. The other theory is that because world saves could not be renamed at the time, and you only had 5 world saves total, if he downloaded somebody else's world save, then maybe cancelled it or somehow bugged it when copying it into Minecraft, for some reason potentially, some of the original world saves region files could have been overwritten with a different world saves files, but even then that's highly unlikely. So was it faked or some obscure old glitch? Well, I guess we won't ever entirely know the truth unless Deadskin Mask admits if it's fake or not. I personally think he updated his world, saw the odd chunk borders and weird structures like I did, and decided to make a spooky Halloween video about it. Regardless, the video became legendary in the early Minecraft community, with many users commenting how they believed it to be true when younger, and even many of the newer commenters still adamant that it was some obscure world merging bug to this very day. If there's one Minecraft myth which has but a slither of the fame Herobrine does, it's Entity 303. The myth began in December of 2013 when a YouTuber by the name of The Speed 179 would upload a video titled The New Herobrine, where he proclaimed to have found a new ghost-like entity in Minecraft, Entity 303. According to The Speed 179, Entity 303 can only appear in creative mode and had only ever been experienced on Xbox 360 Minecraft at the time. The PowerPoint presentation he gave us documents a few images, and this skin specifically. So how did Entity 303 come to be? Well, prior to encountering him, Speed claimed to have received an email from an anonymous user by the name of Frankie, which detailed the very first time Entity 303 was seen. Hi Speed, my name is Frankie. I'm a huge fan of Minecraft, and I've been playing for about two years now. The email goes on to mention how Frankie and his friend John were playing a private server with a few other friends in a Skype chat, working on building a huge city together. Then suddenly out of nowhere, John noticed something strange in the chat. 
Thanks to a plugin on their server called Social Spy, John was able to see that somebody named player.number303 used the command slash stop. Supposedly, John freaked out and thought it was a hacker, with Frankie trying to reassure him it was just a bug and that nobody else could be on the server as it was whitelisted. The group seemed to forget about the very strange incident, but 20 minutes later while Frankie was walking with another friend, Vincent, collecting wood at a nearby forest, they suddenly saw a white figure in the distance with a ghostly skin and blood red eyes. Frankie in a panic took a screenshot and ran, but Vincent for some reason stood still, no longer speaking in the Skype call, seemingly lagging. Vincent would then disconnect from the server and the Skype call, with Frankie unable to reach his phone. Suddenly, Frankie's screen starts glitching and the game became corrupted with the chat spamming objects successfully summoned by player.number303. Somebody else had joined the Skype call as well with no username. John and Frankie's other friend Brady both leave the call, leaving Frankie alone with the anonymous user who tells him make a wish in a faint voice. The Minecraft chat then begins being spammed with text file overload as well as make a wish. Frankie can no longer move in game, close Minecraft or turn off his computer. The unknown white entity then runs up to Frankie and a message appears in the chat reading make a wish and say goodbye to your friends before Frankie's computer shut itself down. Three hours later, Frankie goes to turn his computer on again, realizing almost everything has been deleted. He tries to call his friends to no avail. At school the next day, only Brady is present with both John and Vincent missing. Frankie ditches school to go to John's house, only to find that he had committed suicide with a note containing the familiar Make-A-Wish written in the bottom corner. Frankie leaves to go to Vincent's house and finds that Make-A-Wish is written with a red marker all over the bathroom. Frankie concludes the email by warning Speed, mentioning if he ever encounters Entity 303 again, to close his game immediately and never open it again. The Speed 179 would go on to upload a variety of videos related to Entity 303, many accumulating hundreds of thousands of views. Other players would also post creepy videos about their own encounters with Entity 303, further publicizing the strange creature. Entity 303 would gain such a reputation that even Notch would be forced to tweet about it, bombarded by players asking him about the ethereal being. To this day, there are still a myriad of old forum posts, videos and screenshots discussing Entity 303 and players' many sightings. The story has become slightly muddled as different individuals have contributed, but overall Entity 303 is believed to be the multiplayer equivalent of Herobrine, supposedly being in conflict with him, hacking players' computers and more. Spin-off creepypastas of Entity 303 such as Entity Zero have even been created, gaining decent popularity themselves. So is the legend of Entity 303 real then? Well, it's clearly not- On August the 15th, 2014, a YouTuber by the name of Along Came Josh would upload a video titled I am null.avi. The video sits at only 66,000 views currently, but documented an unusual encounter. The video begins with a thunderstorm, of which Josh claims is the worst he has ever seen in Minecraft before. This thunder is absolutely- Seriously, look, there we go, there's another one. As Josh stumbles around the dark, his screen occasionally glitches and he finds a sign, which bluntly reads, Null is coming. The glitchiness continues as Josh explores more, finding many signs titled Null until a random completely black entity spawns in front of him and the video cuts. And thus the first sighting of Null came to its abrupt conclusion. So what is Null? Well according to Along Came Josh, Null is the new Herobrine who corrupts and glitches your game by luring you close with signs. Null makes no sound at all and is simply a black entity who watches you from afar. The original creepypasta goes like so. Josh reminisces on his early Minecraft alpha days, mentioning how a friend brought up Herobrine around the time. Josh never saw Herobrine though, but remembers once seeing someone who acted like him, but looked very different. Josh looked for this mysterious figure for quite some time, but it seemingly vanished an update later, never to be seen again. When the new Minecraft launcher was released, Josh could now go back to older versions of the game, launching that same version he once saw the unknown creature in. As Josh began playing, he mentioned seeing redstone torches around the world, but chalked it up to some prank Mojang was playing. That was until he saw a sign he didn't place on his house reading just the word NULL. That same night, as he went to sleep in game, he heard some odd noises in the distance that suddenly became corrupted, turning into a muttering glitch noise before his game froze and crashed. Spooked by his experience, he returned to modern Minecraft, which at the time was 1.7.2. After building a house, he logged off for a few days, occupied with school, but upon returning a few days later, he logged in deep underground at bedrock level, not where he last logged off. Continuing down the random path he had logged in at, he began finding redstone torches again before reaching a dead end with a sign. 
He heard the glitchy noises once more before the audio cut out and the text on the sign randomly changed. He exited the game, taking a screenshot of the sign before he went. Help, Null is here, tell everyone about me, the sign said. The story continued to go on and it was revealed that Herobrine was the one placing the signs and redstone torches around the world and Josh met and talked with him, to which Herobrine warned him that Null was the real evil ghost-like creature of Minecraft, not him. Josh would make a few sighting videos and eventually other players would have their own encounters, many racking up hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. Comments on the videos are from many players intrigued by this newer, evolved form of Herobrine so to say, with a large portion believing of his existence. Null seemed to be the modern version of Herobrine, with dangerous powers that could crash your Minecraft and computer. The story of Null would change slightly over time as many individuals shared their own encounters. Players would even roleplay their own fake sightings just like the good old days of Herobrine videos. As for whether Null is truly real, well I'll let Josh give you that conclusion himself. Null and Entity 303 are what I call Herobrine-like beings, clearly inspired by Herobrine and gaining lots of popularity during 2014 when Herobrine began to fall out of fashion. There are dozens of Herobrine-like beings with their own lesser known stories as well. Uranib, or Binary Backwards, is another with similar behaviour to Null. Many players wanted to create their own myths and creepy pastors, hoping their creation would go viral, and other players would join in, realising the potential for YouTube views. Check out the Minecraft Creepypasta wiki if you are curious as to more of the lesser known Herobrine-like beings. The final Minecraft myths we'll be discussing today date back as early as June the 30th, 2010. You see, on June the 30th, 2010, Minecraft's Secret Friday Update 7 released, containing the first ever music discs, Cat and the Mystical Music Disc 13. And what had just been created is the longest running Minecraft mystery in existence. While Cat was a nice tune, Disc 13 on the other hand was off-putting, uneasy and scary. Later in Minecraft 1.0.0, another 9 music discs were added to the game, one of which being the famous counterpart to 13, Disc 11. Interestingly, in earlier versions of Minecraft, all of the music discs could be obtained in survival, except for Disc 11, which also featured the only broken record texture. About a year later, Disc 11 would be made obtainable in survival, still strange it remained the only one not obtainable for quite some time. Disc 11, unlike all the other discs, even 13, wasn't really a song, more of a collection of sound effects containing somebody breathing and coughing or running through a cave. It eventually ends with this horrifying build-up. Disc 11 was immensely unnerving, even compared to Disc 13, and players theorised that there may be more meaning behind both discs. For years, players would try to find a hidden message in the discs, playing them backwards, together, speeding them up, and even trying to identify objects or people in their visual frequencies. Dozens of videos and even animations of the discs were created, attempting to solve the mystery. Disc 13 in particular would also become the background soundtrack of many Herobrine sightings and creepy Minecraft videos, further exercising its haunted reputation. Why was there Disc 11 and 13, but no Disc 12, many players asked, some theorising that they were both recounting the same unknown story. So what is the story behind Disc 11 and 13? Well, let's first take a look at the confirmed facts. Disc 13 is called 13, as 13 cave ambient sounds existed when the disc was first added to the game. This is also why the sound effects present when you play the disc are the old sound effects. Furthermore, C418 originally wanted disc 13 to be found deep in an underground cave, only able to be played using some specific device. This is likely why it sounds so eerie and unnerving, because it was designed to represent the game's ambience, specifically cave ambience, which as we all know, is very eerie in of itself, and it was also meant to be found deep underground in some spooky cave. Disc 11 is the only visibly damaged music disc, and when turned into a spectrogram, which is a visual representation of audio frequencies, it seems to display Steve's face and the numbers 12418. 12 two being hexadecimal for C, combined with 418, read C418. Interestingly, on the official Minecraft wiki, all the discs had their audio shortened to 30 seconds due to an agreement with a composer, C418, but Disc 11 is seemingly exempt from this. There is also a Minecraft volume beta soundtrack called 11, which has a playtime of 1 minute and 11 seconds, and begins with a similar scratch sound that Disc 11 has. 
Disc 11 causes jukeboxes to output a redstone signal strength of 11, and prior to Minecraft 1.13, the data value of Disc 11 was 11. As for the so-called monster present towards the end of the disc, C418 has said that the monster chasing the person is himself, who records songs from strangers, then dies. And finally, the warden is supposedly based on the monster we hear at the end of disc 11. Alright, so we have a bunch of confirmed information and easter eggs, but what can we make of disc 11 and 13? Well, that's exactly what players have been trying to figure out for over 12 years now. There are hundreds of theories online, many players stating that the monster which can be heard in 11 is actually Herobrine, or even that this is Herobrine's origin story with him being the one running away from the monster. Regardless, it's clearly an intentional easter egg which C418 and Notch were in on, and unless one of them states what the meaning of the disc is, it will forever be open to interpretation. Disc 11 and 13 form the longest running Minecraft mystery to date that is still unsolved, with new theories being created to this very day. I love and miss dearly these old Minecraft myths, sightings, videos and theories. They are a relic of a bygone era and have almost died out for the most part. It was an unavoidable outcome though, as Minecraft became inevitably less mysterious over time, no longer feeling as eerie and vast. These days with mods and the power of editing, skepticism is undoubtedly high, and while a simple blurry screenshot was enough to create a legend years ago, nowadays that's just not possible anymore. I truly miss the times when I was afraid to enter an abandoned mineshaft because I thought it was Herobrine's doing, or when me and my friends would discuss the latest Minecraft mystery we found in our single player worlds at school. The nostalgia from these dated screenshots and videos is truly something I relish, and I hope many of you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Consider subscribing, thank you all so much for watching.